Hey everybody, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com and as you see we have this Scottish guy sitting here in the corner eating some pizza pie and drinking a nice big beer. I wish I could have had a beer right now but it's not quite 5 o'clock here yet. So how's it going Don Bauer? It's going super, Greg. <laughs> the day's always good when you've got pizza and beer. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I had a really good question from a uh, Kazillion, from a reader, and he said, you know what, he, he had some questions about autofocus, and Dom and I have been talking about doing some videos together, so I figured this would be a good discussion, and um, so he, the question starts out as, did some bracketed shots, oh, and by the way, he talks about bracketing because I had, his question actually spurred on that bracketing video that I did a couple weeks back, so that's the little background on that. Um, I know how to set it up now, just need to work out how to correctly merge the three images into HDR and um, Dom and I are neither uh, fans of HDR so um, that's a whole other subject. Recently begun to have some autofocus problems. So I've recently noticed that amazing how more you shoot the more you get into photography, yada yada. Uh, back to the topic. I remember you did a video on autofocusing and how you should utilize all of your focus points etc. It was a minor debate on focus between Within the comments section, whereby viewers see in the high end D3, D3S has more cross type focus points than the lower end models. Have you noticed that with lower end cameras, Don? Um, I haven't really shot with many lower end cameras, but um, I did start on the Nikon D80, and that only had 12 points or 9 points. Um, I never really had any problem with that at all. Okay, I think they're talking more, not necessarily about the number of points themselves, but supposedly some kind of a cross type, and I, I think I'd read about that. Yeah, the, the cross types are uh, effectively more sensitive um, sensor dots on your, uh, more sensitive focus dots that you get. Uh, what they do is they are twice as susceptible to movement and to like contrast changes and stuff like that. So they are good to have them in certain areas. Usually you have them in the centre, because that's usually where you have the most amount of kind of focusing, like on a portrait and stuff. Okay. Um, and the rest of your focus points are usually just a single line, um, a single cross, uh, as it were. And the reason that is, is that if you have too many super sensitive focal uh, and... Uh, what the hell am I saying? Uh, I'm a little bit points. Yep. Uh, points. Uh, too many super sensitive points all over the place. The camera doesn't know what to really kind of focus on. So it, usually the cross type ones are in the most used areas, the most important areas of the actual sensor okay. array of focus points. Okay. I guess but there is also other confusing stuff. Like they say they're f two point eight. Um, uh, made specialized for that. So if you've got a slower lens. They don't. They're not that great with it. it. It's focus technology and terminology is actually highly complicated and highly technical. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. So this guy is basically complaining about his camera D7000 back focusing, and I've also had. I don't know if you saw my video that I did a while back with uh, Kathy, where she described how she was having some problems with fast focus, even with a 70 to 200. Um, Nick or uh, I think it was a VR2 that she has so so it's a really good piece of glass but she's still having tracking problems and okay. and lock on so it but it was with the D7000 body so it seems to be similar to what uh, Leo here I think it was Leo yes Leo is describing and um, I can't really help him a huge amount with the D7000 body the D300 body I know I, I even did a video as well where I you can do a thing called micro adjustments to your lens. So it's not so much that the camera is out of focus or the lens is out of focus. It's just that the communication between them are sometimes saying, yes, that's it in focus, and it's going, no, it's not, when I really look at the photo afterwards. Um, there's a bit where you can do micro adjustments in certainly the D300, and I think they may have passed that on to the D7000. I'm not too sure. You'd have to check your manual for that. They mm -hmm. really tell them. Um, but there you can uh, either make the, the lens automatically always focus a little bit further forward or a little bit further back. So if your camera always focuses, uh, does back focusing, as in it focuses on that and not my face, you can put a, an adjustment, a micro adjustment, so it always has a little bit of extra front focus. So instead of being back there, it comes back to here. Um, I've done a video which I can give you the link to on that. It was with the Tamron 
uh, 28 to 75 millimeter lens. On that one, on my cameras, it always uh, back focuses, so it goes be beyond my subject. Mm -hmm. But with my D300, I was able to do a micro adjustment so I bring it back so it's right in the middle uh, where it should be in focus. Yep. Um, the, the only way to really test it is um, like making a put a text screen on your computer, have your camera on a tripod, point it at the letter right in the middle of your computer, take a photo and see if it's focused too far forward or too That's far. That's exactly back what I was going to say. Shoot at an angle. Yeah, you got to be. You don't want to just be willy nilly setting this back and forth. Um, this kind of calibrating or recalibrating thing, you really need to be really perfect about it. You know, uh, maybe even set it. A, try and set it manually first. Do some tests, and then you know, do just keep on doing those focus type of tests, and make sure you're on that single point of focus too. I think that would make a difference. Um, yeah, make sure you're on the single point. Make sure you're on not on the dynamic. Uh, or on the auto area because if you're on either of those it's just, just going to randomly choose a point and it's not going to give you that the right spot yeah well what camera is that you're shooting with just now Greg? i have a d3 and a d3s and i've actually set that in the past like you were saying with the that calibration and my the d3 that i sold actually i had had that problem with that i had sent it in the nikon and they looked at it and they sent it back uh, they of course didn't report any issues, but it wasn't doing it anymore when I got it back. So apparently wow. something got fixed. Um, okay. But yeah, right now I have a D3 and a D3S, and neither of them have any focus issues uh, with um, the, with any of my lenses. Have you ever sent a lens back for recalibration? I have not. I've actually been fortunate with my glass that I haven't needed it. I, I've never sent any lens. Actually, I can't send any lens back because I always buy my stuff secondhand, so that doesn't really okay. help. But I've never known anyone to actually send a lens back for recalibration. Um, I don't know what they would do, really. Do you know what they did? Well, they could, I'm sure there's some kind of specs or some kind of uh, uh, set of settings inside of the the uh, electronics that could, they can set to do want to check the the focus points and you know where the way it turns, the distance that it turns. Uh, I'm sure there's something that they can recalibrate in there to, to make that adjustment. Certainly, actually, uh, a point there. Um, there was a good article on DP for no DP no DP review digital photographer review. Yep. Um, about camera and lens calibration. Just remember that one. Uh, I'll I'll send you the links to that one as well. And what it is is there is a give and take with every camera and every lens that you get. Mm -hmm. And so let's say a perfect in focus is at zero, and you can either be a plus two or a minus two. And if it's beyond that, they would say that the camera is at fault. But it gives this idea of it, there is kind of a level of error that can be in every single camera. Mm -hmm. And same with the lenses that are produced. The technology that goes into them has a level of error, whether it's a plus two or a minus two kind of area of focus something. Um, and it's, if you get a camera which is minus two and a lens which is minus two your images will always come out really blurry or always back focuses or front focuses or something like that and um, so it's, sometimes it can just be one lens beside another in a shot one's got a slightly better calibration compared to another one and they may in terms of the camera company say no they're both in acceptable levels of accuracy acceptable tolerances yeah yeah, exactly. But if you mm -hmm. put them both together, then, or if you put the wrong one with the wrong camera, then you can be totally screwed. Yeah, I have. Um, I've never had any issues with any of mine. Luckily, like I said, but um, it's also possible that lower and Sigma glass, lower and Tamron glass, could have a much wider set of tolerances mm -hmm. versus the Nikkor glass, which is not going to have, which has a tighter tolerance, which could also um, you know could add to it like he's talking about a sigma 17 millimeter it struggled to focus correctly well maybe tr maybe you have a friend or someone else that has a couple Nikkor lenses especially like a 24 to 70 which is going to be a really good lens or a 70 to 200 and do some of those same tests on that same body on the the same distance the same everything that's something else that could make a difference maybe it's a distance thing maybe maybe the distance the focus distance to the subject could be could um, be sending it off. So maybe not only would you be doing that that um, controlled test like you were saying at one, at one distance, but maybe take it back another five feet and maybe not another ten feet and see if it's still doing it. 
Um, yeah, no, I, think, I think that's a good idea. The other thing I'd say is that... Um, wait a minute, I had something else to say. Here it comes. <laughs> uh, it's going to be good, it's going to be good whenever I remember what it was. As you read the email, similarly, my Sigma 17mm... Uh, 17mm... Focus. Okay, you're gonna have to tell you edit this bit out. I have to remember. Oh, I'm so good. It's when you say, yeah, it's when you talk about the different focal lengths. Uh, I could have seen it was sharp enough. Uh, oh, right, yeah, this one. Um, he's also saying that his Sigma at 17 millimeters um, is struggling to focus correctly. The thing is, with some of the lenses which are zoom lenses, having at the widest angle possible, uh, I'm guessing that 17 zoomed into a 24. I'm not too sure what lens that is using Me here. At 17 millimeter range, the tolerance again is really quite flexible. Also, the sometimes the sharpness of the lens itself isn't that great whenever it's at its widest angle. Mm -hmm. So it may not necessarily just be focused; might also be sharpness adding to making it look more blurry and more out of focus. Yeah, the other thing that surprises me about that statement is is that typically when you have a wide or a super wide lens like that. You barely even need to focus it anyway. Mm. You know, mm. even if you're shooting at f four or five point six, you know, you 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 if your subject's five feet away, it, everything's in focus anyway. It's like you're shooting at f twenty two on a twenty four to you know seventy millimeter lens. Yeah, pretty much yeah. everything's in focus. And in order to really get something out of focus, you really need to move in close in order to start to to blow other stuff out. So. Um, I'm wondering what, how he's come to that conclusion. Yeah, and the, the, the great thing is, though, what you, no one can complain about, is with digital cameras, we can take the photo, we can look at it, and then we can adjust. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like we have to go and get the film developed and find we've done a whole film worth of out-of-focus photos. Mm -hmm. So it is a case of, if he's got a still subject, like a portrait stuff, and he finds it's takes a photo, sees his back focusing, starts just using some manual focus and really kind of learn that in the meantime until you get your lens or your camera checked out. Take it to the shop. I would say just take it to any shop and say, hey, I bought this camera here the other day. There seems to be an issue. And then just see if the people in the shop can actually have a little fiddle with it and play around and see if they agree with whatever is the issue that you think it is. Yeah, definitely try that. And if they can't help you, if they seem like they're morons and, and have no idea what they're doing or they think that you know, you're just trying to pull their, their, you know, smoke in front of their eyes or whatever. Uh, I would say just, just do some testing, see what happens. Um, get a, a friend's lens, maybe, maybe uh, borrow a lens from somebody or buy a lens to return, and then you know, do some additional testing if you don't have any friends. That that is our photographers, or maybe they shoot a different don't have any, friends. any friends at all, yeah. Or maybe maybe they shoot Canon versus Nikon or something. I don't know. You know, then maybe the lenses don't mount. So, bottom line is, do some testing first, see what happens, and then possibly send it in. You know, one piece at a time. Uh, one thing that I will say is, uh, a friend of mine actually had this problem when he was shooting Canon, and Canon does seem to have a bit of a more of a reputation for being not so great with his focusing compared to Nikon. Yep. So I've heard. Yep. And he actually switched to a D700 and a D3 in the last, uh, I think, three or four years because he had spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars sending in his bodies and his lenses to some custom guy who would keep recalibrating his glass to his cameras, making trying to make them absolutely perfect and then you know two three weeks later they'd be totally out again really yeah and he was using um i forget which body he was using but he was using pro bodies you know pro canon bodies pro glass you know the 85s Are you having trouble with that piece of pizza <laughs> 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 so he, he was using pro equipment. It's not like he was using cheapo stuff. And he, you know, he's a pro. It's not like he he's, hasn't been doing it a while. He's been doing it for fifteen or twenty years, like me. So, you know, mm -hmm. he really maybe probably longer than me because he's like ten years older or fifteen years older. So, um, an old man. Uh, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't. I don't want him to, to get mad at me. <laughs> but anyway, he had that problem. Here, a um, little question on the side note of this. Mm -hmm. Um, do you know what really, really pisses me off? I'd love to hear it. When I go to camera stores, and I know more 
than the people in the camera store about the cameras that they're trying to sell me. It's pretty rare that I don't. To be totally honest, it's pretty rare that I don't. But then again, I don't go to camera stores very often. Um, the the closest decent camera store is over like an hour and a half from me. That's probably a good thing because otherwise I'd be there all the time spending money. <laughs> uh, so it's like a day trip or a half day trip for me to go to the camera store and come back. Uh, I, I just sometimes feel like I went into a professional camera store okay. the other day uh, to do a review of the Nikon V1. Yep. Ought to have that in a professional camera store. Anyway, uh, on and on. And on. But uh, I was asking the staff, like, whenever Nikon goes to the store and says, right, guys, we're selling new stuff, they usually give the staff a demonstration and all the information, all the brochures and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So staff should be totally on the ball with that stuff. When I went in, I asked the guy, he's like, all right, okay, yeah, so this is the V1, so this is the more expensive one. He's like, oh, uh, uh, mm, uh, did I know? And I said, oh, yeah, so it's 10.1 megapixels. And he's like, um, uh, hold on, I have to check that up. It's like, what the hell? Yeah. Why do you not know this kind of stuff? I really think there is definitely a market for camera stores that don't just employ salespeople, but proper, like, photography people that are just so desperate in photography all the time. There aren't many of them anymore, unfortunately, because everybody, you know, the people that are in there are, you know, the, the gap is widening in between the people that can can take or will take a, you know, 10 or $12 an hour sales job versus, you know, be a professional like you and I. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's part of it. And the other thing is, is that since there are a lot less stores out there that are real stores, there aren't as many people that that want to learn a lot of equipment you know they learn their own equipment and that's it so mm -hmm. you know you, you you really never know you really never know so any other points anything else you thought you'd mention um no okay well uh, but just uh, yeah just for the the guy that sent an email about the getting you know, the focus stuff right i'd say uh totally agree with yourself just do a couple of tests if your camera does have the ability to do micro adjustments check your manual see how it can be done i'm sure it can mm -hmm. and then just doing uh like test shots with your camera on a tripod shooting at something at the wall at an angle and then being able to see exactly if it's back focusing or front focusing and checking out there and that'll probably either he'll be able to fix it in his camera and have it sorted and not have to send anything away or if it's if he can't do that then he best take it to a shop and try and get the shop guys to try and figure, figure it out for him Sounds good. Yeah, I, w I would agree with that, and I think that's going to be the way to go. And, and uh, all right, cool. Now that the pizza's gone, <laughs> the pizza, pizza's gone. You got to still got another swig of beer in there, right? Just yeah. to finish it off. There it is. All right. Well, everybody, follow. Uh, what's your Twitter uh, account? Twitter and Don Bauer Photo. Don Bauer Photo, and the and the same as the YouTube. I'll put links up uh, for both of those. And uh, all right, thanks, Don. Uh, have a good Perfect. evening. We'll see you. Cool. See you later, dude. Bye. Bye.